And welcome back to Career Build Series. So, last episode, did some work on the tugboat, made it work a little bit better uh, as a towing vehicle, as we're going to kind of uh, twilight that vehicle as our rescue vehicle and make that more of what it's supposed to be, which is a, um, you know, a tugboat for towing. And so this is the barge that did that, so this should look familiar. Uh, pretty basic white boxed barge. Uh, holds a considerable amount of fluid, uh, about 200,000 liters. Um, as you can see, this is our containment, or this is our uh, commodities container in here. So one thing I was thinking about doing is the barges are pretty simple and easy. That's one of the reasons I like to make them. The other thing I can do on here is containers. And so one of the things I want to do is I want to make it so that the barge can self-load and unload. So let's actually look at some of my barges here. So one of the, if I can spell it right, so one of the barges I had was, this is actually a notch barge. I don't know if that's the correct term, but the tugboat I initially had for this, it slots in here. So this is what's known as a combination unit. The tugboat is actually affixed via this uh, slot. And so this barge I did, this was my old fuel barge. But then I also had one that would do containers. And so this is the container barge for that. As you can see, it has an onboard crane. So one of the thoughts is to make an onboard crane for the barge. And so what I want to do here is let's look at the barge that I was working with here. And so what I like to do is put a crane on here. Now I have a container loader that I built uh, that was shown in the last career build series. That's actually on the workshop. I have a couple of them. I have a ship loader and a container mover. The issue is this, is that I want to, you know, if I, let's say I was going to go from Sawyer North to Spy Cakes, I would need to launch the ship loader and then load the containers. Then I would need to bring the ship loader back to the train hangar and despawn it and then go to Spy Cakes and then go back to the train hangar, spawn it again. Well, I need to own both bases in order to be able to spawn the ship loader. If I make the contain uh, the barge so that it is self-loading and unloading i no longer need to be able to I, I no longer need to own those bases i can still go to sorry north i can go, still go to spy cakes i can still go to komodo and i don't need to actually own the base to be able to spawn something that will be able to load and unload it so i want to try to figure out a couple good crane designs here and so this here is my barge for the um, for the liquid commodities. Now, a couple thoughts here. One is to make, to take this as my basis and to convert this. Now, when you're doing something like a crane, the best type of stability system is to have an active stability weight. If we look at a couple um, examples here, if we take out in Triton, Triton was the home ship from the last career build series. Triton's able to easily load containers with this large crane. And it can do it because if we look down here, we have this enormous mass in here. So this weight will slide back and forth. And so to have an active stability weight like that, that is ideal for cranes. And the reason is as the crane arm goes out, the further the arm is, the more of a torque arm, the more counterweight you need. So by having a very heavy, large weight in the lower um, area of the ship, it keeps the center of gravity low, even though the center of gravity is being raised by the crane. And it also is very fast and active. If you did something like liquid ballast, you wouldn't be able to pump it in and out fast enough to counteract the crane because the crane's going to grab the container, it's going to swing, and you need to be able to counteract that. And so you just don't have the time for that. So you need a, a weight to be able to move back and forth pretty quickly. If we look at the new home ship that we have here, here it is now. I, I added a crane on there. That's probably not going to be the final crane. I'm not really thrilled with it, um, but... This also has an active stability weight. This one's much smaller than in the home ship because it's not moving as much mass. I Likely, I will not be loading any containers on this ship. Um, it's just, I think uh, what I'll be doing is doing barges and tugs. Um, again, trying to do more purpose-built stuff, uh, this, this uh, career build series. But again, it has that active stability weight. That tends to be the best way for a crane. So as the crane is lifting off the port side, the weight would move all the way to the starboard side. And that makes it so much easier to be able to do that. And that's when you need active stability systems. And so uh, if we look at this barge and how this is set up for liquid, we have our liquid container here that will hold our, in this case, oil. And this is all air ballast under here. And this air ballast is what gives us the buoyancy to be able to carry this 200,000 liters. Let's spawn it and I'll kind of show you where we're at with that. 
So this has 200,000 liters of water in it. And as you can see where it's sitting there, we need all that air ballast. So right around here is all air. And then you have your commodity in the center. And you see we need all that air to keep that going. All right. But when we're doing containers, we can do it a little bit differently. We don't, we can put in a weight instead. And so instead of having this um, liquid in here, we'll do containers. Now the issue is this. Ideally, what we want to do is we want to drop the containers in as low as we can. That keeps the center of gravity low uh, to keep stability. But barges are nice and wide. So with a ship, you'd have to worry about if you put your containers up too high, it's going to roll over. A barge is less so because a barge is very wide. So one thing I want to do here is let's go to selection grid. We'll go to load content. I haven't even checked this myself, but if we go to presets, the devs um, recently in the last few weeks, they put in this container preset. And what this allows us to do now is to put in a container for testing. As you can see, I can move this sideways like so. I can also move it forward and back. Um, so as you can see, we could fit uh, probably even three across or more likely what I'll do is we'll put them sideways like this. And so I need to come up with an efficient system to be able to load some, uh, to have the ship self load containers. So let's go ahead and we're going to put this container in here. I'm going to just make sure that we're equidistant here. So we're talking, what's that? One, two, three, five. Make sure it's five on this side. Uh, one, two, five on that side. Okay, good. So let's start pl placing some containers here. And so what I tend to do is the minimum gapping you want is about two. And that's going to make sure that these connectors do not grab one another. That is incredibly important. If your containers will snatch one another, you're going to have huge problems in game. Um, you know, you're going to have all sorts of physical issues as the containers are trying to grab each other. So the minimum, I would say two. Uh, what do we have there? I actually have three here. So I'm going to go three. That's going to be even safer to make sure that my containers are not um, trying to grab one another and cause absolute catastrophes. If you save and reload a save, the containers will try to grab each other. What you want them to do is to grab the closest connection points. And so what that will be is there'll be connectors um, underneath them. And so they're going to decide, hey, I have a connector right here. I'm going to grab this connector. I don't want to grab this connector. We can also shut off the tops that will prevent that. So by putting a good gap, they're going to try to grab the nearest connector, which will be right next to it. So that's incredibly important. Now, one of the reasons I'm building this on top of the oil uh, barge is one thing I did last career build series, which I thought was a good idea, and I think I'm going to do this one, is I would like to make one barge that can do multiple things. You know, I'm going to be doing some detailing, some painting. I don't have to do that twice. If I can do it once, that's fantastic. So it will save me a lot of work to make one barge that can do both uh, liquid handling and barges. And I'm sorry, and containers. And so what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to sit these on the deck like so. None of these buttons should be selected to start with. And so let's get a quick count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. All right, now I need to go in here and... In this commodity tank, if I can find it right here, I have seawater. I'm just going to drag that to zero. So now we're going to have all air in there. And we'll see how this sits. So those are all loose. As you notice, it's sitting pretty well. It's not too bad. But one thing we do have is, as you can see, we're still sitting up a little bit high, which is nice. What we can do is we can add a stability weight. Now, the issue is this. Currently, generally in these barges, you allow them to sit up really high. So we we just need a counterweight for the crane system. I'm trying to decide if I, re you know what, I might do the crane as a separate plug-in system. We'll kind of see. So what I would like to do is ideally sideload these and put, you know, put the barge up. There's a couple ways to do this. One. If you noticed in that container barge I showed you, it actually bow loaded. You 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 put the bow up against here. Now let's think about why, right? So this is the beam, the width of the barge, and the beam gives me um, rotational stability. So it gives me port starboard stability. The wider the barge, the more stable. Well, if we go in from the bow. This is now the new beam, right? We're loading this way. That gives me an enormous amount of stability. So if I bow load this, if I push the bow up here, 
that gives me an enormous amount of stability. So that is one notion is to bow load it. Um, if we go sideways, that's going to cause us more problems. We have a lot of stability uh, stirring to bow. So let's let's do a little bit of testing here. All right. So if we come in and we were to bow load, that's a lot more stable than to try to go side loading. So that's an option. All right. So let's see. I'm trying to think what's the best way to do this. Trying to think what is the best way to do this. So I would need sliding tracks. I am thinking bow stern. Let's let's try something here. So here's another option. Let's try something really quick here. Let's just do a quick little test. Now the further, the longer the crane is, the more of a lever arm it has. All right, so let's try, let's do a power pivot. I'm just going to play with something really quick. I'm going to make this super simple. Uh, this is all proof of concept testing to see if this is going to even work. So... I'm going to put a couple pivots. They don't need to be all the way down. Maybe right about, oh, I don't know, there. This is just a lot of guesswork to see what we're at. I'm just going to color it yellow. That would be my pat yellow for my construction type stuff. And so I'm going to just drag, make this really simple, single arm like so. All right, and then I'm going to make a sling system. So I probably want to go a little bit further here. All right, let's merge these like so. All right, so I'm going to make this super simple. Uh, again, proof of concept. And a lot of people don't do a lot of proof of concepting. Proof of concepting really helps you to uh, make sure things are working correctly. All right, so I'm just thinking how I want to set this up. I need to have some sort of carriage that I can put in here. I have a couple carriages already pre-done, but... Um, Okay, let me see. I think what I'm going to do is do four winches. And we'll do these winches here. All right, this I think is going to be the easiest. Simple, you know, in engineering, simple is safe. The simpler you have something, also the wider these are, the more um, stable they're going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do rope logic here. And I'm going to go from here to there, from here to there. And then these two are gonna be the close ones. In real life, you'd wanna cross connect them, but in game, it doesn't like that, it freaks out. So you don't wanna cross connect them. All right, now I'm gonna just gonna do a seat or a handle. I think a handle is good. I've started doing some handles here. Let's just put a handle here that I can control this from. And I'll put it right in the center. Again, this is just a proof of concept. Will this work? Once we know if it works, we can make it look pretty. We can do all that. So here's my control handle, and I'm just going to put this as low as I can. So it'll be right here. Okay, good. All right, uh, I want to configure this, so I'm going to do uh, WS is going to be sticky. We'll do like, oh, we want this low. This is going to be like 3 or 4% is good. All right, and then we want, I'm trying to think of my numbers here. I don't have that many numbers. Uh, so one is going to be, all right, let's see here. So one going to be up. I probably don't have enough space. I, I You know, I can do it with a microcontroller, but we'll do one is up there. Two will be down on these front ones. Ideally, each winch I could control independently. I'll probably do that later. So where's three? Three, 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 three. Nope, where's three? Three is right here. So three is going to be these up for these here. And then four will be downs. Okay, good. So that is set up. And so again, really quick proof of concept. Make sure this works. All right. And so the... This is what it's going to look like bow loading. So let's go ahead and let's actually try to operate this. Up, oh, I actually probably have to connect, connect it, don't I? So I want to do WS. Where is WS? And then connect WS. So. 
WS. WS is going to go to these pivots. All right, let's go ahead and let's test it again. And so this is just a very light, simple crane. Not a lot of work, but it's uh, just a test. Make sure it's going to work here. So WS, so as you can see, that's coming up. All right, so now what I want to do is, so the front is tight. So the I want to do three. Tighten that up. And I forgot they're on toggle. All right, and so let's get this even up. So let's go ahead, do one. And we'll press one again. And so this is just a sling design. Look at how stable the barge is. Now, the barge has all of these containers on. All right, so what we'd want to do is start this probably in a vertical position so that I can go all the way around. But proof of concept wise, look at how much I can move this and the barge is pretty stable. And that's because we're going forward back. The width of, or the length of this ship is essentially like having a really super wide ship. So sometimes if you can load it to a bow load like this, it is much easier. So we can actually make this work. And the way we, we can make this work is with extendable booms. And so what we can do is as long as we can go up vertical, we can pick up all the containers and then offload them this way. So that's a way. So let's go ahead and proof of concept, this is working. So now that we have a proof of concept, we're in good shape. So let's go ahead and let's actually kind of build it this how we want it. And so I'm just going to delete all this out and we'll redo it. And we'll kind of build the crane. It you know doesn't have to be our final crane. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of start the process here and get this going. All right, so we're going to go back to power pivots here. And I'm just going to set this low, and uh, that's that's a little bit low. Let's push this up so that it's about where it's going to sit. That way it won't um, oscillate as much. So I'll do power pivots here, and I'm going to stick them. Let's find our center point. That's always nice to know. All right, center point is where well, that is 121. Uh, so what are we talking? 61 is our midpoint. So 61 right there, and I'm just going to mark that. And we can get rid of this measuring block there. All right, so there's our midpoint. So now let's get our, we'll get our yellow color and we'll grab a pivot. All right, so now we're going to do it like this. And then I want to do this extendable. The other thing we do is put this on tracks. Let's put this on tracks. All right. And by doing, you know, one of the reasons I'm doing this forward back instead of sideways is it should save it so that I don't have to worry about counterweighting. Counterweighting is going to be a little bit of a pain. All right. So I want to go linear track base like this. And which direction? It's going this way, so let's go that way. Where is my center point right there? Center point's right at the middle of this one here. Okay, and so that should we should have two of those. Let's go tracks on either side. This is going to allow me to have a shorter crane by making these movable. Sometimes they don't like to behave as well if they're movable. But the nice thing, as you can see, is we have plenty of space on this barge. This barge is large enough that it... Um, affords us all the space. All right, so that is now set there. Let's go ahead and grab pivots. And yeah, we'll do a yellow color for this. All right, so there's our pivot and that's gonna slide, that's gonna, you know, this will allow us to slide forward and back. All right, now we need to go vertical and so Let's see, how do I want to do this? We might actually not need it that tall. Let's try this now. Let's 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 do another quick proof of concept, see if this will work without me having to um, extend. If I can make it non-extendable, that's going to save me some headache. So again, still in the proof of concept phase, I'm not worried about making this look beautiful. I'm making the... Um, worried about making this work. As soon as I know it's going to work, we can worry about making it look attractive. 
I think a lot of people go right in and try to make it attractive. And one of the things is you get attached to how it looks and you really like it. And then when you have to sacrifice some of those looks for functionality, you start to dislike it and it kind of ruins it for you. So, all right, so this will also allow me, so often what's going to happen is you're going to, like say you want to make multiple stops. You want to, you know, you're going to pick up all the containers for say, you know, pretty much, let's say you pick up all the containers here at um, Spy Cakes and you're going to drop a couple off Komodo, pick up any ones on your next trip and then keep moving along. Um, they might be out of order, so you need to be able to pick them up in any order as well. So let's go ahead. We want, uh, where are we at here? One, we'll do the front ups. All right, and then what do we have here? We have two is the uh, front downs. Beautiful. And I just need to change view so I can actually see it. Three is going to be the back ups. You know, I will make a microcontrol on this and make this much more elegant and do exactly what I want. But sometimes it's beneficial to do these things early where you really just do them. The, but I often find a lot of people don't take the time to make sure that they're actually making sure something's going to work first. And it's incredibly important to make sure it works first because you are wasting a lot of your own time if you... If you make it beautiful and then, oh my God, it's not going to work. I wasted all this time decorating. Make sure it works first and then go in and make it pretty. Like, uh, kind of, you know, one thing I think about is if you, if you notice with, like when you have the artist rendering of a new car and it looks really cool and fantastic and then the one that they actually make is kind of boring. And part of that is the... You know, the artist's job is to make it look beautiful. The engineer's job is to make sure that it works. And so often what makes it beautiful won't make it work very well. And so they have to go back in and change it. And so if you can kind of get ahead of that and not have to do that, it uh, it's kind of beneficial. Okay, so good. So that's let's spawn this. I didn't hook any of that crap up, did I? Uh, I no, I think I did. I hook everything up. I did good. Okay, so I actually hooked everything up this time. All right, good. So let's give it a proof concept, real simple, super simple crane. Whoop, I extended those too far, but that's not going to be a problem. All right, so let's start by, we're going to press, I meant to take them off toggle, but I guess they can say on toggle. One, three, really quick, a couple times. As you can see, here it raises it. Container's going up. It's not the most attractive thing, but at the end of the day, what I care about, does it work? Now, I want to be able to put this, Oh, I don't know. At least um, a container width past. So as long as I can put this past where those things are sticking out, I think we're good. So now let's press 5, 6. Oh, these are on toggle, unfortunately. There we go. These are on toggle, which I'll change later. People will often say, oh, my, my crane is making my ship jump all around. Slow them down. You know, uh, force equals mass times acceleration. Your mass is static, right? The weight of the container is not changing. But you can change the acceleration, how fast your container is moving. That will decrease your force. That will uh, that will decrease the amount of um, rocking and rolling you're getting. All right, so now, so say that this end here is up against the dock. All right, so it's up against the dock. Look at the reach we have. Now, all that container up there, all these containers, that's ballast, okay? So that is ballast that is going to be holding the ship from going. Now, one thing we have to worry about is when it's empty. Uh, when it's empty, we can't do as much reach, but watch this. So see how much we're tipping? I wish I'd put a tilt sensor on there. Okay, so see how much we're tilting? Now let me start bringing the arms back. Oh. Um, now, by doing this... Where the pivots are is actually where the force is being implemented to a certain extent. So that's all we really need. So we should be able to angle it more and have less um, tilt. But as you can see, we don't even need it as tall as it is. We could, we could operate with it much shorter than it is because we can tilt. But that's a good height that guarantees we can reach. But you see how simple and just utilitarian this is. So let's hit, uh, what do we need to hit? Two and four. 
And so can we put this on the dock? Yes, we can. So it's a very simple and easy way to load containers. Let's actually load this back on the slot, make sure everything works. It, you know, I have no doubt that it will. Let's uh, straighten this back up. All right, let's go ahead and we'll press 6, 1 and 3. I want to hit 2 and 4. And let's load that back in its slot. Now, you notice how the green lights are all on on top, but the red light on the bottom is not. So we do have to worry about it. Um, the, the tops connecting one another. All you do is shut those off, and you don't have to worry about them snapping to each other. So I'm just going to press, uh, was it 5 or 6? I can't recall. 5, and that will stop it. I'm just going to do W just to get that straightened up. Uh, 2 and 4. And as you can see, we're pretty easily. So now see how we have a three gap on each side? The connectors on the top of all the containers, they are already energized. So this is a good test to tell us, are they too close together? Notice how they're not trying to grab one another. That means they're not too close to one another. That means we're safe. So we're actually pretty good the way this is set up. This is actually doing pretty well. Um, so let's do, let's do one test. Uh, this is going to be the final test for the proof of concept phase for this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna grab there. Let's stretch this out. I'm gonna delete every container except one. And this is gonna be worst case scenario. This this is gonna make this the most sensitive by doing by deleting all these. All these containers are acting like ballast. They're actually, they are ballast, they're mass. And so we're going to delete all but one of them. And then I'm going to manipulate one and make sure that this is still behaving. And I have a feeling it's going to be fine. All right, so those are gone. Let's go ahead and spawn it. All right, let it kind of jump around. Now, remember, th these aren't attached. Nothing's attached, and it's still behaving fine. So what I'm going to do is now we have to test the tip. How much does this tip if I lift one... Uh, let me do this really quick here. I need to rope logic these back up. Okay. All right, so th that is now attached. Just to give me some ropes. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to go, I can't remember, if it's five. Let's go ahead and do one, three. That's going to suck up the ropes and, and drag this container up. Oh, it can actually hit five. It's sliding fine. All right, it's raised. All right, so now what this is going to do is this is going to show me, I'm just going to hit three really quick. That will straighten the container out. Okay, there we go. All right, now I'm going to hit six. We'll send that out. I'll go ahead and I will hit, uh, what is it, 1, 3. I will stop them. All right, so now this is going to show essentially worst case scenario. Be now, before, when I was tipping one container, we still had, say, five containers um, on the barge. Those five containers were, one, pushing it lower in the water, which gives it greater stability, lower center of gravity, but also they were all on this right side. So as I tipped this container out to the left, it made it less likely to tip over. So that's a part that got left behind. So I have a feeling this is going to be no problem. Now, if we were trying to rot go sideways off the side of this barge, it would be more um, it would be more sensitive. All right, so let's put that all the way out. Now look how little this barge tilts. You notice it's tilting towards the container, which we should expect because the mass is hanging way out there. But that's perfect to get it on there, no problem. And so this is worst case scenario, and as you can see, it's fine. So by using a barge, we don't need an elaborate um, active stability system. We don't need to do ballasting or anything. And this will also function quite well as our liquid container. And we can also completely stow this crane. So let's say I wanted to stow the crane while I'm doing a, well, we're actually at sea. I don't want that crane sticking up. You can see how nicely we'll be able to stow this crane. And that crane will just sit on the end like that, and it will be will actually be flatter than that. Let's go ahead and press 6. And 
Uh, what's that one? Uh, I'm trying to just remember which key to hit. Nope, that's the wrong one. Uh, was it four? Four. Okay, four drops it. There we go. Let's drop that container. Let's make them slack. And as you can see, that could stow like that, nice and low, and it's out of the way. So this is a really quick, simple, easy design. Not a not a lot of problems here. This should work really well for me to be able to um, load and unload containers. And so one of the reasons I want to do this is I, I want to get into some oil trading probably before doing containers just because of ease. But you notice this is really super simple. And simple is, like I was saying with engineering, simple is safe. Simple just makes it really quick and easy to, to it, it, it reduces the chance of problems if you're making something simple. And so that's what we want to do here. We want to reduce the chance of problems. We can easily load containers. The one thing we're going to need to do is have something that we can put on dock to be able to move containers. I currently have a container mover. I'll show you here in a second. Let's quickly save this. I haven't saved this yet. All right. So as you can see, this proof of concept, this works really well. I don't know what where this came from, but oh, you know what? It's right there. So that's new. Um, they, I think that hard point is new on this container. Uh, all right, so that's there. I just missed one. Let's go ahead and delete this. So that's a really simple crane. We'll make it more attractive. We'll put some bracing in there, make it look right. But um, at least in this episode, I wanted to get the proof of concept done for this. And so that will tell us what what we can expect, what to look for, what's going to need to be fixed or changed. So really nice, simple proof of concept on this. All right, let's go ahead and save this. So let's say container barge 2020, 2023 proof of concept. Okay, good. All right, so let me go ahead and I will just quickly teleport over here. I'll show you what I built last time as a portable container mover. And so it, it it's a little bit of a, I don't know if I'd say it's a pain, but it's a little bit of a, it requires a little bit more work to operate, but it is very compact. So this is my portable container mover. And so this is on the workshop. The nice thing with this is I can move a container with this. I'll show you really quick how it works. But I have a little mini truck. And where's the toggle button? There it is. And where's my parking brake? Parking brake. All right, so here's my little portable container mover. And so the whole point I built this is it's so small that, for example, Sawyer South has no place to spawn uh, a container mover or a container loader. And so this needed to be small enough that this can easily be loaded onto a ship or onto a barge. And so I could load this on the barge and bring this with me. I can spawn it on the barge. I can load on the barge. I probably, I won't bother building a new one. I'll use this. Um, you know, I'm trying not to use too much stuff that I haven't built in this career build series. But this is pretty simple and easy, and I'll show you how this works. This is all set up to... Logic's not super complex on this, but there are some things like, for example, you um, you need to make sure that the trailers break so that the container doesn't... Um, oh, did, are there any containers over here? I don't think the spawn has containers there. Stand by. Okay, it doesn't. Here, let's do this really quick. So let's go ahead and let's come in here. Let's go get rid of that nonsense. Let's put this all in the ground. A lot of people don't put their builds in the ground either. Let's go ahead and we will grab the preset here, preset container. And I'm just going to stick it over here. And I'll show you how you load this. This is even easier doing it this way. All right, so what you would do is... All right, so you start by bringing... Okay, where did it go? I never pasted it. Grr, annoying. Okay. There, paste. Ding dong. There we go. All right, that was my fault. I'm pasting it here. So. All right, let's uh, try try 10 or whatever this is now. All right, so you notice this back unit here. So this back unit, we're going to back right into the container. All 
All right. And so I can use my reverse camera here. Where is it? Right there. And we're going to go in reverse. And I'm just going to do it in third person so you guys can see it as well. So we're going to back up. And I actually didn't activate the um, the grabbers in the container, which I should have done first. But I'll get close and then we'll be fine. So what you do is you back this up to the container. And the whole point of this is it's super portable, super compact. That's its whole job. All right, so that's close enough. Let's go ahead and set the parking brake. All right, and the nice thing is I can push things in Snowmark. So we're going to go ahead and activate the bottom. All right, so notice that grab. So what you'd actually do is you'd actually, um, you would lower the container like so, and you'd leave that there like that with it down. Uh, parking brake goes on, and then uh, this is the interlink that interlinks these. You release the interlink. The container will stay connected, so we don't want release container. We want that connected. And then what I can do is jump in here. We're going to first. Remove the parking brake. And now, as you notice, that stays with it. This one comes over here. And so this is a quick and easy way to move this. And so what I'll be able to do is, is you look, if you look on top of that one, there is a rope connector and there's a rope anchor there. And that allows me to be able to load this onto that barge. So I'll be able to put this on that barge and I can use the camera to first person this. Now the sh uh, same thing in game as an IRL, the shorter the trailer, the actual harder it is to back up uh, because your your movements are exacerbated because of your pivot point. I won't go into it too much detail, but you know, kind of rule of thumb, shorter the trailer, the more likely it is to, um, the harder it is. So we want to lower, where's pistons? Pistons, notice it lowers it. I just need to get this close enough, it will snap. There we go, as you see it snaps. All right, so now what do I want to do? I want to, uh, first of all, let me get this out of reverse so we're not listening to the beeping. Okay, we'll put it in neutral. All right, next thing we do is we raise the pistons. As you see, that's raised up there. And you heard it lock. We're going to raise the pistons. I want to re release the parking brake. And now look at that. We're suspended. Container is now pulled by this little uh, truck. And so we can parking brakes off. Let's go and we'll drive around. And so as you can see, this is a nice, super portable, very light, very inexpensive method. This is not meant to be driving these containers all over town. There's actually some really neat systems like this IRL. I'll see if I can find some pictures. Um, you can actually move containers with like a van doing this sort of thing. But as you can see, this is nice and simple and it allows me to move a container around the dock and all I have to do is get it close to the barge. And then when I'm done, I can load this little truck back on the barge. And so no matter where I go, even if I go to Sawyer South, which doesn't have the ability to spawn something, I can easily move containers. And so I can bring this over to see it jackknifes a little bit. I uh, just need to tap the brakes. Um, that's the trailer trying to go faster than the tractor, which is pulling it. All right, and so there we go. And as you can see, that then we could drop the container. So I'll show you how to drop it. Let's put the brake on. I'm trying to practice good methods here of putting the brakes on. All right, so we come over here to this one. Now, these are actually pretty neat. So these communicate with each other via radio. When they're disconnected like this, um, the brakes on this one are actually, you see how the lights are going? The radio is controlling this one. That's how these brakes are actuated. So both the lights and the brakes are actuated via radio. So um, like right there, there's the antenna. So what we want to do is lower the pistons. We can um, set the parking brake, all right? And we come over here to the front one. We would lower the pistons. We would release container. All right, then we can raise pistons. All right, and now we can move. All right, I didn't activate the interlink. Let me do that really quick. So that is release interlink. This one should have release interlink still. Uh, actually, Release interlink is now off. So this will snap together. Generally, I actually probably should have waited until I made sure they were aligned, but I'll just make sure I line them well. And then to get that back, all you do is back into it, connect it, 
and then you take that with you. So this is a little bit more time consuming, but it's, you know, it's um, you're essentially you're sacrificing convenience for portability. And so generally you have to make sacrifices with your engineering decisions, you know, and so in this case, we're sacrificing convenience for portability. We're sacrificing speed for portability. I actually want to make sure that interlink's off. So let me just make sure that interlink's off. And so release interlink, that will make sure these don't connect. And the whole point is, like, so say you struggle backing it up, you can push it in game. That's nice and light. Let me uh, go ahead. These don't have any sort of grip editing on this one, I don't believe. So, you know, um, a little grip editing would make the slide less, but it's not, it still works fine. And so I just need to get these close. Probably even that close is good. Let's hit the brake, parking brake. Uh, because again, in game, one nice thing we can do is, as you can see, I can push this. And so once that's close enough, we will um, do release interlink. Okay, it grabbed the wrong side. See, it grabbed the wrong side. So that was a m my mistake. It See, it grabbed this one and this one. It should have. So I didn't have it close enough. But this does work. I've used it a hundred times. It's just trying to rush. And rushing is never a good idea. And so that's how this works to get that over there. But a um, little bit of proof of concept in here. And so I'll probably end up using this to move my containers. But you can see how a nice simple crane system. So kind of, you know, some of the little lessons to learn on that is by doing a front loading barge, you don't have to worry about the stability. If we were going to side load, I would probably most likely have to put on some sort of system to be able to counteract the crane movement. By doing it front load, I don't have to. So what I'll probably do is off screen, I'll dress that crane system up a little bit, make it look a little bit more attractive, make it function a little bit better. Um, I have a couple, let me show you some of my other container loaders. Um, the issue again is I need to make sure that I can spawn it with the barge so that, because um, I'll show you the map really quick. So for example, if I wanna move a container from here to here, I need to buy both bases. If I do it this way, if I do it with the portable container mover, I don't have to buy both bases. I can spawn my barge and my tugboat. I can go up here. And even though I don't own spy cakes, I can grab containers. And then I can go over here and drop them off and sell them. Grab them from here and sell them. I don't have to own the bases. That's a thought. Uh, I just want to kind of get that proof of concept. I'll probably actually end up moving off to fuel trading. We're getting close to the oil update coming out. And so I don't want to do too much in case, uh, likely, I would say I'm 99% sure I'm going to have to start a new save. It's not a big deal. Uh, when it comes out, I will do a quick a quick refresher tutorial on how to edit your save and get back money and everything else. I've, I've had to redo saves multiple times and never had a problem with it. And part of that is if you copy the header of your save file and you just copy over the old one, most of your information is there. And all your vehicles are still saved, so it's really not even not all that hard. And like, say, say that I bought this island here. Um, you know, last career build series, I had the Cape House here. Well, guess what? You come in here, really quickly, just type in Cape, and bingo, that's back in the world if you need it. You know, so it's not a big deal. I I know some people make kind of a big deal of it that. Um, they have to start a new save. But frankly, I don't mind starting a new save. It it often doesn't cause me any problems. I've had I've started the save three times, changing some options, and I've never had a problem with it. So um, I hope you guys are looking forward to the oil. I think, um, you know, I just want to kind of get some notion on what I was going to do with this barge. I want to make sure that I could go to containers. I'm not really all that interested in doing container moving at the moment. I think I'm more interested in doing oil, but before I kind of finish that barge, I wanted to I wanted to know can I build a barge that will do both effectively? And the answer is yes. Because one of the things is if I did the crane system differently, if I did a side load crane, I was gonna have to add a weight block, an active weight system, which would make it so that I couldn't carry as much oil, so I'd have to change my oil system. So this way, by doing the barge this way, I really don't have to change anything. Uh, the other thing is I would like to have as dumb a barge as possible. All I want it to be is a lump of barge. I don't want to have, like, the last career build series, I put on anchors, and I put on generators, and I put on all these systems. I don't want to do that on this one. I want this just to be a dumb barge that just sits there. And I might do, a, a sol like, a, a solar panel on there just so that the anchor will operate fine, but that's about it. And so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, 
will hopefully be doing, I'll probably hold off on doing any sort of fuel trading until the new DLC, uh, DLC. I keep saying it because people keep putting in the comments that they think it's a DLC. It's not. Um, I will probably hold off until the new major update, which is going to be the oil update to actually start doing some of that uh, movement of oil and doing uh, commodities trading because we can do it with the new content. So uh, I'm going to kind of play episodes by ear. We'll probably do some more rescues, but I thought that would be interesting kind of uh, start work on the container barge. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.